Hi YouTube, this is one of a series of videos looking at the documentary A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon, produced by Bart Sabrell. You will hear me mention him quite a lot. Check out my channel for other videos in the series, or for the box set where you can watch them all in one feature length video. Part 9 The Smoking Gun In this section we take a look at the second piece of TV footage presented as evidence of fakery. This next clip is from GET 3359, a scheduled live TV transmission made about a day later than the first transmission. As they perfected the shot, a crescent-shaped piece of black material was inset slightly into the window to create the illusion of the Earth's terminator line dividing night and day. It is uncannily convincing. The big question that springs to mind here is where? Where is this piece of material? What evidence is there of its existence? We are told it is there, and in my experience, most viewers of this movie believe they have seen it. But it is simply asserted by the narrator. All we see is the Earth surrounded by solid blackness. During this segment, intended to be edited and played back later for the worldwide television audience, dated July 18th, 1969, Neil Armstrong condemns himself as he states that he is 130,000 miles out, or halfway to the moon, as the NASA flight log also states on this date, when he is in reality in low Earth orbit of a few hundred miles. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. Calling in from about 130,000 miles out. We know that this was not intended to be edited and played back later, because the broadcast is listed in advance in newspapers of the time. It started precisely on time and went out live. Here, during another segment, also intended to air after review, Neil Armstrong falsely explains to the viewers how the shot is attained by putting the camera's lens to the window's glass, as it would have to be if they were the claimed distance away from the Earth. We only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with a TV camera. If the window was completely filled up with a TV camera, as he stated, then an astronaut's arm would not be able to get between the camera and the window, as it obviously does here in this outtake. South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. You can also notice how the astronaut operating the camera reacted to the mistake by attempting to pan away from it. This clip is actually from the same live scheduled TV transmission, 10 minutes further on, not a different one. Again, advertised in advance, broadcast on time, and reported on afterwards. We are told without any reasoning at all that to record the Earth at this distance the camera would have to be against the window's glass. Moreover, we are told that Armstrong explains this. He doesn't say anything of the sort. He simply states that the camera is filling the window and not completely filling the window. Let's get some context of this from slightly earlier in the conversation. Pauses edited for brevity. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh... Could you describe, uh, from your view, uh, the uh, polar cloud cap appears to us to uh, extend uh, down the western coast of uh, North America? Uh, would you would you estimate how far it ex uh, extends down over? Everybody into the window. It appears that the cloud cap comes down uh, a little bit below uh, the southern extremity of Alaska. Roger. We've uh, eleven. We've lost our picture here now.
Okay, uh, Apollo 11, Houston, we've got the picture back now. Unfortunately, we only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with a TV camera, so uh, your view now is probably better than ours is. Roger, we copy. So we see Aldrin tells us that all three astronauts are around the window. The camera we can see is handheld between the astronauts and the window. And this isn't leaving a lot of room for Armstrong to get a good view of the Earth and describe it. There is nothing to indicate an astronaut's arm. I think it's probably the edge of the window. But even if it was an astronaut's arm, so what? This isn't some mysterious thing that needs to be quickly covered up. It's just an astronaut trying to aim a camera while floating weightless in a cramped spacecraft, probably distracted for a moment. They were aiming to keep the Earth in shot, and when he realised the camera had drifted, he adjusted it accordingly. Remember, the only person to tell us that the camera is against the window's glass, and has to be, was the narrator. OK, we're down to the big reveal. This is a segment that they believed wasn't even being recorded, much less suitable for broadcast, for the lens was being zoomed out and the scene was being changed to that of an interior of the astronauts at work and apparently the stop button popped back up on the recorder without notice. Here is the diffused work light that they used to see camera controls but not throw light onto the spacecraft's wall. Here they remove part of the crescent insert Finally, the iris is opened up and you can see the real location of the camera and the very bright and near Earth out the window. Here is the slate for the 19th of July and the same shot of trickery on the 19th of July and then the 20th and the same misleading shot on the 20th. Later that evening, they were said to be walking on the moon how can this be when they were in Earth orbit only nine hours earlier and the moon is some three days journey away? Furthermore, if they genuinely went to the moon, why would they be faking any part of it? Why this trickery with the window? By faking being halfway to the moon, it becomes apparent that they did so because they could not even go halfway. It thus confirms that the stumbling block to their success was the lethal radiation of the Van Allen radiation belts. Since the same equipment was used on the subsequent missions in the 40 months that followed, none of them could have gone to the moon. They only increased their proficiency at staging them. Well, since they keep saying it, I will too. This is from the same scheduled live TV transmission. The crew knew that they were live across the USA. They are pointing the camera at the Earth and providing a commentary. What would be the purpose of this if they didn't think that they were even being recorded? This supposed accidentally revealed scene change was detailed in the commentary. We will pick this up right where we left off the last time. Unfortunately, we only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth and it's filled up with a TV camera, so uh, your view now is probably better than ours is. Roger, we copy. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, if you could uh, comply, we'd uh, like to see uh, some smiling faces up there. If you could give us some interior views, I'm sure everybody would like to uh, see you over. Okay, we'll uh, reconfigure the TV for that. Roger.
Channel 11 Houston uh, appears to us that uh, we're seeing a view from outside plus a little of the uh, of the inside. It appears you've taken the camera away from the left window. Now over. That's correct. We're uh, moving it back and uh, reconfiguring for uh, interior lighting. Roger. Uh, we can still see the earth uh, through the left window, and it appears that uh, we can see a floodlight uh, off to the left, either that or some sun shafting through the hatch window. It's a floodlight. Ah, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that had. Uh, it's big Mike Collins there. Well, you got a little bit of... Yeah, hello there, sports fans. You got a little bit of me, plus Neil's in the center couch, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. Uh, Roger, uh, it's a uh, little dark uh, now, Levin. Uh, maybe a, a bigger F-stop might help. Yeah, that's in work. <laughs> Uh, it's getting a lot better now, Levin. Uh, Mike, you coming in uh, fire by. I got a good. So, Mission Controller Charlie Duke asked the crew to get some shots inside the spacecraft. Armstrong said they would reconfigure the TV for that. Eventually, we saw a floodlight that was behind the camera gradually swim to a position in front of the camera. Charlie Duke noticed they had moved the camera back from the window, and Neil Armstrong confirmed this. And all of this went out live across the USA. The claim that this is the result of a stop button popping back up is a ridiculous fabrication. And this bright sunshine reflecting off the inner glass of the windows, we are told is supposed to be the Earth, which Aldrin continues to broadcast to the nation, even though apparently it is revealing the hoax. If we jump back two hours and 20 minutes, the crew shot some unscheduled TV footage that Mr. Zabral has neglected to show us. Let's take a look. Here we see our familiar shot of the Earth. Oops, what's this? An astronaut's arm, maybe? Nope, it's the frame of Window 1 again. And as the camera zooms out, we see the Earth and window frame and the interior of the spacecraft. Now the spacecraft rolls and the Earth goes out of view. I will speed this section up a little in the interest of brevity. And soon we see the Earth reappear, this time through a rendezvous window showing that all of Sabrell's assertions about low Earth orbit, spacecraft windows and inserted pieces of material are figments of his imagination. OK, it's time to wrap this up. Conclusions in Part 10. Part 10. In Conclusion. OK, let's summarise what we have been shown in A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon. In Part 1, a total misunderstanding of radiation types is used to pitch the Van Allen radiation belts as an impenetrable barrier initially kept hidden from the public. In part two, illogical and unfounded arguments suggested the USA was incapable of competing with the Soviets in the space race, and that money could be saved with a hoax if only thousands of people could be convinced to keep quiet about it. We also heard a plan for part of the hoax using a satellite that wasn't needed and wasn't capable of fooling the people it needed to. Part 3 offered an analysis of Apollo photography, with entitled and unfounded demands for more photos of this and that, and demonstrably incorrect assertions about shadows and hotspots. In Part 4 we were treated to unqualified claims about missing blast craters, and in Part 5 it was the stars that were missing, with confused and deceptive assertions to support this idea. In Part 6 we saw flags blowing in the wind, and then we saw flags not blowing in the wind. 
Part 7 suggests slow motion was used to fake lunar gravity with a single cherry picked clip and no further investigation, along with several incorrect claims about TV coverage. Finally, in parts 8 and 9, we saw the supposedly previously secret killer blow smoking gun evidence, which turned out to be nothing but a handful of tiny snippets of TV transmissions coupled with creepy music and more than a handful of outright lies. As I said at the start, this movie is held up as the killer blow for Apollo by many hoax believers. What it actually shows us is how easily those with a strong confirmation bias can be convinced by a very unsophisticated and dishonest piece of movie making. If you are a hoax believer, I am not suggesting that this video should convince you to change your mind. But if a funny thing happened on the way to the moon was your reason for disbelieving Apollo, please dump it for the piece of dishonest crap that it actually is and find something else. Thanks for watching, please rate, comment and subscribe.